Somebody reminded Vince that SmackDown is his show too. The only thought I could have about what I watched on Friday night. Because, oh boy, this was not good. It just was not. It missed the mark on so many different levels. And, of course, it's because they decided to start the show off with Daniel Bryan and a hot mic. Now look, I'm not that huge of an anti-Daniel Bryan guy. I'm really not. I've been, I feel somewhat fair to him over the years. While certainly he is not my flavor or my cup of tea as a professional wrestler, I've given him props and his dues at different times throughout the years, so you can miss me with all that crap that I know is inevitably going to come from your flaming keyboard fingers of fire. But, let's be real here. This promo was god-awful. From the very beginning with Michael Cole's setup, why would you turn down a tag team match to try and get a world title match? Is that a real question? Seriously? When you start off the promo with the premise of that question, it's going to go all downhill from there. And it was, and it was dumb. And Daniel Bryan was all over the place. I don't know what the hell he was trying to say, what type of message he was trying to get across. It was like over-convoluting the very simple. And then he's fumble-fucking through his words. Like, this is really, really bad. It almost felt like halfway through, they had to send our tribal chief, Roman Reigns, out there to try and save the day. And by God, he did the best. He said, you are the underdog. You're a little guy. <laughs> but and so even the tribal chief, like he's a magic man. But it takes a miracle to say what the hell this was. And this feels more like WWE trying to shoehorn Daniel Bryan as substitute Christian or something, as opposed to doing anything else of real substance. This, is, this just feels weird. You're shoehorning him in. I'd rather you wait until post-WrestleMania to do this. It's just taking away from the focus of what you should be doing, which is building up towards Edge and Roman at WrestleMania. And I think... That's the major flaw with having Fastlane as late in March as they do. That they're trying to somewhat build up the show, especially since it's going to be the first uh, WWE Network special event on the Peacock Network. They're more worried about that than building up to WrestleMania! And it sucks. You follow that up with a couple of singles matches. Montez Ford losing to King Corbin and then Angelo Dawkins beating Sami Zayn. It is a conspiracy, Sami, and you didn't hire him! You didn't hire him! Ugh, just the whole the whole night was just off. Carmella fires Reginald, and it, it feels like it's one of the two things here at this point. It is either A, that Vince can't trust the Sasha and Bianca story to carry itself heading into WrestleMania, and therefore he's got to interject a man in there to try and fix it. Like, all that's going to do is convolute the shit out of it and make it worse. Or B, he is trying to keep that pathway open, because he fears having either Sasha or Bianca lose at WrestleMania, and they're still trying to leave that door open to put Carmella in there. Because if you're going to do that, you're going to put a white chick in there. Wouldn't it be much better if it was Bailey? I'm sorry, but you're talking about potentially your night one main event of WrestleMania? If you're going to try and shoehorn some white girl in there, I'd much rather would trust and much rather prefer it be Bailey, and I think it makes infinitely more sense on all accounts. Well, the real development out of this is that Naya seems to think that Reginald's kind of cute. She wants him to fire away on her hole. That's what the hell this is all about. Dominic Mysterio beat Chad Gable, and I really don't see the point of this. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it, it really didn't feel like much was being accomplished throughout this show. Uh, like the whole Bianca Belair and Shayna Baszler match. Like, it's a shame. This is the type of match you would think of that you would have spent like a week or two building up to. You try, try to have a little mini story in there and then actually have a decent match. And, you know, I'm not complaining about Bianca Belair winning, obviously. You don't want her losing. But you, you, you dispatch one of your tag team champions relatively quickly here. And the whole thing about, like, Sasha Banks and Bianca, I gotta look at it like this. I can't be the only one, right? Bianca's real. Like, she feels genuine. She doesn't feel like she's acting. Her act is who she is. Whereas Sasha Banks comes across as incredibly fake, really phony, 
and like she's trying to be something she's not and act like something that she doesn't really believe in. There's not really a whole lot of boss to her, and as far as like her on the mic, am I wrong in saying that she's always been kind of cringy on the mic and she's just not very good at it? Whereas, well, Bianca's not perfect, you know, she's better, and it's easier to connect with her, it's more relatable, like, am I off here, guys? Let me know in the comments. But I don't think I'm that off. I really, really don't. Um, for some reason, they decided to put Kayla Braxton on TV. Look, she can make her big announcement and then run away from it on Twitter. It's still weird. I'm trying to figure that out. I guess. It's ignorant that people would sit there and talk shit to her about her decision or her announcement. You're by. Congratulations. Frankly, and I understand it's come from a white guy's perspective, but aren't most women bi to some degree anyways? Like real talk. Like what percentage of women are actually bi, either overtly open about it or sleuthy or I did something with my friends and my roommates in my college years? I, I don't think that's as big of a deal. Easy for me to say, but I don't see how that's as big of a deal. Furthermore, why put it out there on social media, apparently looking to get attention on yourself and then immediately run away from it? Like, you, you can't avoid the comments. It's just weird. Uh, but of course, I got to put her on camera because we got to give Seth Rollins, Rating Slayer, his time. Uh, not only did we give him an interview, which is likely to drive away viewers as always, decided we're going to bring him out ringside for Cesaro and holy hell, it's Murphy. You dropped the whole Leah Mysterio story. So now he's just out there jobbing to Cesaro in short order. Yippity skip and whoop de you and fuck all of this. Bad. Speaking of bad. Oh my God. This Apollo Crews stuff. I'll say this. He's no longer Apollo Snooze. That's a good thing. And I like some of what he's demonstrating here. He's showing me some depth. He's showing me some personality, which previously I didn't see. But there's just something that's off about this. Like you look at it purely from a timing standpoint. Are you trying to tie this into coming to America? But then you're really trying to make it more seem like it's a Black Panther Wakanda forever thing that you're about five years too late on. Four years too late on whatever. I mean, what, what, what are we really trying to go for here? And, you know, it speaks to the largest problem. And here's what Apollo's theme should be. Like his theme should be called Real African American. He's the real African-American, reps with pride his motherland. He's the real African-American. Hey, Vince, you know it's not right. You're only doing it because he's not white. Like, why is it every time it seems like a non-white wrestler that's not a masked luchador like Rey Mysterio embraces their heritage or their roots or their ancestry, they've always got to be portrayed in this anti-American villain light. Why is that? And you're going to have the white splainers out there that'll sit there and talk about, well, you do a Zeb Coulter and you do a Sergeant Slaughter. All right, stop bringing up the exceptions to the general rule. There's enough of a general rule here over the years that when a lot of these guys portray their heritage and they're not white... They get portrayed in this villainous type of light. And you're going to say, well, he did sit there and turn on Big E. Okay, I'm waiting for you to tell me why that's instantly hateable. I mean, he's acting much more serious. He's acting like he really, truly cares. If anything, I'm finding more reasons to like, like Apollo Crews than I am Big E at this point. But why is that? Like, why is it when somebody like Apollo Crews, born in Sacramento, California, but from Nigerian ancestry, has to come out, you got to manufacture this fucking accent that he doesn't have, that he wasn't using before, and then you have to portray him like he's some big, evil, militant black man that's going to try and take over the world. Like, it doesn't have to be like that. I realize it does in Vince's warped view, worldview mind, but it doesn't need to be like that. And the lyrics I just threw out there is like basically what came, came to mind. It's, it's just ridiculous. Like it's really bad. 
And Bailey's ding dong, hello, sweet tweets segment was really dumb. It was short. Like, what was the whole point of that? You know, if you're going to rip off the ding dong gimmick, well, ding dong, dumb dicks, you can come up with a hell of a lot better than what you did here. And then we got to the main event, and of course, of course, after Daniel Bryan didn't get the job done last week, he does what any entitled ass snowflake does, and sits there and whines, pisses, and moans until he gets another opportunity because he's white, he's entitled, and he ain't none of them things deserving. So, of course, he gets his match with Jey Uso, got to put it in the steel cage, and of course, Miraculously, he wins. So he gets rewarded for this shitty promo where he's talking about stupid things like alluding to Edge and Roman being part-timers. Oh, oh, I've been the one wrestling every week. Well, you know what that means? That means you're not as big a star as them. They don't have to wrestle every week because they have other ways to actually get and stay the F over than you do right now. Everything was about us was so dumb. So, of course, we're going to get Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns at Fastlane, and it's going to be dumb. Our tribal chief, the head of the table, will do his best. He'll do his best, not because he needs it, but because of love. And he told you about love tonight at the opening, when he had to bail Daniel, on Friday night, when he had to bail out Daniel Bryan's ass on the promo. And he's gonna apparently gonna have to show some of that tough love to Jay, like fuck him up Jay, on Friday night SmackDown this upcoming week, because Jay said he had it under wraps. He said he was gonna get it done. And just like typical choke job Jay, he didn't get the job done with his hard headed ass. I'm sorry, like all shit aside, this show was really bad this week. Like I felt like I was watching a two hour version of Raw. If you told me that this was Raw and I was in a parallel universe, I would not have been surprised at all. Because this show sucked.